Welcome to this video on capacitors in series and parallel. In a previous video, we've looked at how we can calculate the capacitance, the charge stored and the energy stored in capacitors. But in this video, we're going to look at how capacitors can be connected together in different arrangements. And very similar to resistors, we can connect capacitors together in series or we can connect them together in parallel like we see here. And again, just like when we looked at series and parallel resistors, we can calculate what the total capacitance will be in these two types of arrangements. When we looked at series and parallel resistors, we saw that in the case of series resistors, we could just add together the different resistors to get the total. So if we imagine that these were resistors here on the left hand side, I would simply add R1 to R2 and so on and so forth to get the total. In the case of parallel resistors, we had to use a different formula. We had to say that 1 over the total was equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, if those were resistors there. With capacitors, we're going to use a very similar method, but these formulas have to be applied the other way around. So in the case of series capacitors, it's going to be 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 gives me 1 over the total. And in the case of parallel capacitors, we can just add them together. C1 plus C2 gives me C total. So let's write out these two formulas because the first one here is to say that 1 over the total capacitance is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And I can extend that formula if I had more capacitors in series. In parallel here, we're saying that the total capacitance is equal to C1 plus C2. And again, I can extend that formula if I have more capacitors connected in parallel. You'll see here that I've got some values already marked on my diagram. And we're going to calculate the total capacitance for both of these networks. So let's first of all look at the series network on the left hand side because we can say that 1 over the total capacitance, 1 over CT, is 1 over 330 plus 1 over 220. You'll notice here that these capacitances are in microfarads which should be expressed as 10 to the minus 6. I can do that um, in my formula here, but if I'm consistent and I know that my capacitances are both in microfarads, then in this case I'll get my answer in microfarads. So I'm happy to leave that just as 330 and 220. So when I calculate that, I get an answer of 0 0.0075 recurring. Now remember, that's not our final answer because what we've worked out here is 1 over the total capacitance. Well, I don't want to work out 1 over the total capacitance. I just want to work out the total capacitance, CT. And so the important rearrangement here is to move that 1 over to the other side of my formula. So I can say that the total capacitance is 1 over 0 0.0075 recurring. To save writing this down and re-entering it into our calculator, it's best just to use the answer function on your calculator. So you can say 1 over the answer on your calculator. And that's going to give me CT equals 132 microfarads. So that was for our series arrangement of capacitors. Let's repeat this again for our parallel arrangement because we know that for parallel capacitors, we just have to add the capacitances together. So we can say that CT is equal to 330 plus 220. Again, I'm not bothering with our standard prefix of microfarads. Um, I, I could do that, but I'm just going to leave those as they are because I know that I'm going to get my answer in microfarads as well, which will be 550 microfarads. And that's for our parallel arrangement. One other thing worth mentioning here is going back to our series formula. There is actually an alternative formula we can use providing that we only have two capacitors in series. 
this formula here can be extended for as many capacitors as we have in series. If we've only got two, we can get away with using an alternative formula, which looks like this. It's CT equals C1 times C2 over C1 plus C2. This is similar for a formula that we can use for resistors in parallel. Um, R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2 for parallel resistors. But likewise, we can also use it for series capacitors. Let's have a look at one more example. Here I have a slightly more complicated arrangement of capacitors because I have two capacitors that are in parallel connected to a third capacitor in series. So to work out the total capacitance of this combination, I'm first going to try and simplify the circuit by looking at these parallel capacitors first. We know that capacitors in parallel, we can just add to find the total capacitance. And so what I'm going to call this is C1 in parallel with 2. And I'm going to say that that's equal to 2 millifarads plus 820 microfarads. Now, what I said on the previous slide is that we need to be consistent in the units that we choose to use in these examples. And so there are a thousand microfarads in a millifarad. And so rather than saying two millifarads, what I'm instead going to say is 2000 microfarads when I enter it in my formula here. So we can say that C1 in parallel with 2 is 2000 plus 820. And so that's going to give me 2,820 microfarads as my total capacitance of these two capacitors, C1 and C2, in parallel. Next, I can work out the capacitance of my entire network here by combining in series the capacitance that I've calculated here, C1 in parallel with C2, with this third capacitor, C3. And so we know that to work out capacitors in series, we have to use one of our two formulas that we looked at on the previous page. I'm going to use the second one that we introduced, which is to say that CT, we can say is going to be C1 slash 2, 1 in parallel with 2, times C3 over C1 slash 2 plus C3. And so we know some of the values here. We can say that that's the same as saying 2,820 times 680 over 2,820 plus 680. And that gives me an answer of 547.89 microfarads. So I hope you found this video useful on series and parallel capacitors and how we can calculate the total capacitance of simple networks of capacitors like we've seen here.